Oh, this thing's heavy. It's a good workout. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. In this video, I'm going to show you the first mini ITX computer I've ever built. I'm a longtime advocate of smaller cases, and you'll rarely see me build in full-size towers. I build a decent amount in mid-size cases just because they're the most common, uh, but my favorite form factor is definitely micro ATX. I've never made a build video for anything smaller than that though. I've stayed away from mini ITX because up until now I haven't found the right case that made me want to take the plunge. Uh, mini ITX is a bit more niche and deciding to focus a build around it will limit some of your options and come at a premium. Uh, the cases themselves are higher priced than average uh, and the intro components for them are more expensive too, specifically the motherboard and power supply. For this build though, I found the perfect case that I just had to build in the moment I saw it. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to be working with Micro Center to make this build happen. So let's check it out. So I'm teaming up with Micro Center for this build, and they sent over the processor, motherboard, RAM, and SSD to help me out, for which I am super grateful for. For those of you who have never heard of Micro Center, it's a department store that specializes in computers and electronics. Their stores have a large variety of parts to choose from, probably the best uh, when it comes to brick and mortars for PC enthusiasts, and their pricing is very reasonable. In some cases, their pricing is just straight up the best compared to their competition. They build a very good reputation among the PC building community, especially among the frugal and deal hunting crowds, which I myself am a part of. If you have one in your area and you're looking to build a PC, definitely make use of them. They'll have everything you need to put together a full build. But if you're like me and you don't have one nearby, definitely hop on social media and hit them up and let them know so that hopefully they will one day open up more stores closer to the rest of us. But now let's get to the build. The first thing I want to talk about is the case. Usually I talk about this last, but this time we'll look at it up front so you understand why the parts downstream were chosen. This build will be in the TU-150, a very new mini ITX tower from Lian Li that comes in at $110. It's an update to their TU-100 and 200, known for their small form factor and distinguished carrying handle at the top. And the TU-150 is a modern successor. It sports a tempered glass side panel, sleeker overall design, and it keeps the handle up at the top, except now it's retractable so you can hide it. I am obsessed when it comes to handles on PC cases. It is like the number one thing for me when it comes to features on a case. So this brought me way more excitement than any other case has in a while. Aside from the handle though, one of the other really cool features to mention is the screwless design on all the outer panels. So where the screws would normally be, you have these push pins that lock the panels into place. It's definitely a nice feature that I hope becomes more common across all manufacturers. And this case doesn't come with any fans, so you're gonna have to pick some up. I grabbed a pack of Lian Lee's 120mm Bora addressable RGB fans. At $60 for the set of three, these are a bit pricier because they are addressable and they can be controlled from the motherboard header. And they've definitely got a bit more of a premium feel to them with the machined aluminum on the fan housing. I chose these because they look really good and they match the silver case while still being priced in line with addressable RGB fans from the other big well-known brands. The processor I chose for this build is the Ryzen 5 3600. This is a 6 core 12 thread processor that succeeds the very popular Ryzen 5 2600 which succeeded the very popular 1600. AMD pretty much nailed it when it came to their 6 core Ryzen 5 lineup. They've always brought tremendous value to the table and they pair really well with a wide range of graphics cards before they become the bottleneck. This processor comes in at $190 and it's an ideal candidate for builds in the $1000 price range which is close to where this build will come in. I'll be sticking with the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler for now to keep the price down. I'm a huge fan of these coolers, they perform well for being included in the box and I think AMD did everyone a solid when they updated their fan designs because these can go with any build aesthetic without looking super cheap or out of place. The motherboard I went with is the ASRock Vitality B450 Gaming ITX. This costs around $120 which is on the cheaper side for an ITX board that has overclocking capabilities. Even so, it's still nearly twice the cost of a standard or micro ATX B450 board. From what I could find, the cheapest AM4 ITX board costs $100, and that is the A320 chipset, which can't overclock and is a first generation AM4 chipset. For an extra $20, I think it's well worth it to hop up to a 400 series board so that you can get more longevity when it comes to future updates, and you have the ability to overclock if desired. Because it's a 400 series board though, being used with a 3000 series Ryzen processor, the BIOS does need to be updated prior to using it. Doing this saves you quite a bit of money though, because the only readily available 500 series chipsets right now are the X570, and there isn't a single ITX board that can be found for under $200 brand new from that. For the memory, I went with 16GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro at 3200MHz. 
The market's really great right now for RAM. Uh, prices are relatively low and there are plenty of different makes and models to choose from. For Ryzen build, as always, it's recommended to get as high frequencies as you can, but as long as it's within reason, going up to like four gigahertz, uh, you're gonna see a lot of diminishing returns for how much you're paying. So the 3000 and 3200 kits are what I'd recommend for a good balance of price and performance. I think these kits look really nice. I chose them because they'll help with the build aesthetic and I haven't used these Corsair Vengeance RGBs before, uh, but you can choose a handful of other kits to achieve the same performance if you'd like. The graphics card I'm using for this build is the Founders Edition NVIDIA RTX 2060. The 2060 has an MSRP of $350 and that price hasn't really dropped since its release. This paired with the Ryzen 5 3600 will land you in the 1440p resolution uh, when it comes to gaming. And there aren't many choices in this performance bracket. You can spend another 50 bucks for the 2060 Super, or alternatively, if you're a fan of Team Red, the RX 5700 would be a good substitute for a similar price. For storage, I'm using an Inland Premium 512GB NVMe SSD, and this comes in at only $60. This is a 3D TLC SSD with read and write speeds rated at 3100 and 1900 MB per second respectively, and you'll see in the benchmarks later that the performance of this drive will actually exceed those numbers slightly. The power supply I'm using is the Seasonic Focus SGX650, which is an XFX L standard. This is where we're going to have to pay another ITX premium. First was the motherboard, next is the power supply. SFX power supplies typically cost twice as much if you're comparing it to something with similar build quality and wattage rating. Uh, it's just the way it is. This unit is fully modular and has neutral black cables. They're rubberized, not braided, uh, and they'll blend in with most build themes. Like the rest of Seasonic's focus line, it has a 10-year warranty, so paying a premium for the smaller form factor and higher quality unit will pay itself off over time as this can be moved from build to build as future upgrades come along. So you buy this once and you're set for the next decade. So those were the parts, now let's take a look at the build list and price summary. The build comes in at around $1100 and there will be a $30 difference depending on if you account for micro centers, CPU and motherboard bundle discount. Uh, the price of this system is a bit on the higher side because we are compounding multiple things like the ITX premium, uh, all the parts are pretty much the newest generation and there were no deals from the secondhand market, everything was brand new. Now there are going to be people out there that don't have this much money, but they also won't care about like the ITX form factor, uh, RGB, and they don't mind buying parts from the secondhand market. So I'll give recommendations on how you could bring that price down. That way this video will be useful for people with different ranges of budgets. Here are a variety of things that would bring down the price while still giving comparable performance. You can go one generation back on the CPU to the Ryzen 5 2600, which is Still very viable and is priced fantastically at the moment. $120, that is pretty hard to beat. That's brand new. You can grab a used 1070 Ti or a new 1660 Ti, both which are capable of 1440p gaming and it saves you around 100 bucks. And you can ship out all the RGB and grab standard parts that don't carry the ITX premium. And if you do all those things, you can save around $350 or you can do something in between and save yourself $100 or 200, however much you need to save. The key thing to any PC build is to lay out how much money you have to spend and how much you can allocate per individual component. You know, make a spreadsheet, it's free on Google Sheets, and play with the numbers until it works for you. Whether you have a small or a large budget, just always be cognizant of where your money is going and ask yourself, you know, will I be happy with this PC for how much I'm spending? And if the answer is yes, then that's all that matters and you're good to go. So now onto the build process. Building in the TU-150 was super easy. It really felt like building in a micro ATX case. It wasn't as cramped or hard to work in like some of the other mini ATX cases I've seen online from other videos. There was plenty of room for cable management behind the motherboard tray and at the space at the top of the case. And I'm really loving the push pins from the panels. It was so nice to not have to worry about twisting off every individual thumb screw if I wanted to open something up. Uh, it was super quick and convenient. And here are the glamour shots of the build, complete and ready to go. So now let's take a look at the performance. I didn't overclock the Ryzen 3600 because I'm using a stock cooler. I did play around a bit with the all-core overclock and was able to achieve 4 gigahertz and get it stable. But the processor was running really warm and the performance difference wasn't enough for me to warrant it. 
So for now, I'll keep it at stock, but I'll always have the option to throw in a better cooler and push for a higher overclock in the future. The RAM is running at 3200 megahertz and the RTX 2060 has a 75 megahertz increase on the core clock and 800 megahertz increase on the memory. So all the games were run in 1440p at graphic settings that I thought were ideal for that specific title. Uh, so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. So those are the benchmarks. Overall, I really like how the build came out, even with it being on the higher end of what I typically feature on the channel. Uh, normally, RGB doesn't really get me really giddy or anything, but something about this build was extra stunning to me with the RGB in it. Like, even my own personal system, which does have RGB components, I prefer to keep those on like a static color. But for this build, I don't know, there was something about it. It may be the one that wins me over to the RGB side because I was not a big fan of it until I finished this build. But either way, let me know what your overall thoughts were in the comments below. How many of you out there have built mini ITX systems? And for those of you who haven't, are you interested in it? And would you be willing to pay the premium? I'm curious what the consensus is. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video though. Uh, and before I head out, I wanna give a huge thanks to Micro Center for reaching out to work with me on this build. Because honestly, I thought I'd be one of the last candidates on their list for consideration since I don't even have one in my state. Uh, I am openly welcome to them one day opening shop in Seattle. Uh, I'd be a very frequent customer if they ever did. And I really like what they're doing and providing for the PC community in this day and age where shopping online has kind of taken over. Uh, there's just something to be said about going into a store and being able to hold a part in your hands before buying it, especially at very reasonable prices that they have. Uh, but yeah, I just want to thank you all as always for watching and supporting the channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I hope you liked the build. And I'll see you down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.